In the previous video in this series investigating the role caffeine has on heart health, we saw some worrying results across two studies showing that caffeine increases blood pressure. There was a lot more nuance to that conclusion that I'm letting on here, but you can check it out for yourself. In this video, I'd like to extend our investigation to long-term effects. Does caffeine have long-term negative cardiovascular effects? And beyond that, what about those 15% of people that really seem screwed up by consuming caffeine? Let's find out. While in the last video we discussed two controlled studies, in this video we're going to lean on three associative studies that investigate three things. One, caffeine's association with blood pressure, its association in people who already have high blood pressure, and its association with actual outcomes like stroke and heart attacks. So these studies can't determine cause for their outcomes because they're correlation studies, but I think they offer some insight on our questions. Overall, the researchers of these studies used databases containing thousands of people's health data and cross-referenced it with their caffeine intake. Beyond that, they did sub-analyses based on the caffeine metabolism enzyme that we discussed last video. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'd highly recommend that you go back one video because I explain it in more detail there. But in brief, people metabolize caffeine quickly or more slowly depending on a mutation that is found in the liver. Those with an AA gene have a fast metabolism of caffeine, and those with AC or especially CC gene mutation have a slower metabolism of caffeine. These differences are strongly implicated in increased blood pressure, as discussed last video. But what we want to know is if we actually see differences in cardiovascular disease if we look at caffeine consumers with these mutations. Remember, it's a minority of the population, but a pretty sizable one nonetheless, so you may be among them. Naturally, more detailed information can be gleaned from my detailed analyses of these studies, which will be attached to this content for you. First, let's look at the association with high blood pressure. Does coffee, regardless of caffeine metabolism, have an, a detrimental association with blood pressure? Well, this first study shows there is no association between coffee drinking and high blood pressure. As a matter of fact, it's associated with reduced risk. But how about across the caffeine metabolism differences? In fast metabolizers, there is no increased risk. In slow metabolizers, there is not only no increased risk, but a reduced risk with coffee consumption. But I will caution here that not all studies show these effects. Some show opposite results, but we'll get back to that. One such study looked at the association of caffeine on increasing blood pressure in individuals who already have high blood pressure, so a special circumstance. The data shows that there is an increasingly strong risk associated with greater caffeine consumption, but only in those with slower caffeine metabolism. It also shows a slightly protective effect or reduced risk over time if you're a fast metabolizer. So far, according to the two studies, we see that caffeine is at least not associated with increased risk of high blood pressure, except if they already have high blood pressure. Then people with slower caffeine metabolism genes have a strong association with increased blood pressure even further. Now, how does that actually translate into results? Show me the heart attacks, the strokes, and the peripheral artery diseases. Forget the blood pressure. So here we're looking at the risk of cardiovascular disease with increasing levels of caffeine consumption in all people grouped together, just the fast metabolizers and with the slow metabolizers. The more the squares and lines move to the right, the more of an associated risk of cardiovascular disease with one implying neutrality, so no greater or lower risk. There's definitely more to it than what I'm explaining here, but again, check out the detailed analysis for more nuance. Where do we stand? Well, in the pooling of all people, we see there's an increased risk of heart disease and general cardiovascular disease associated with no caffeine consumption, as well as decaf drinkers. Beyond that, on the other end, consuming too much coffee increases this risk assessment. 
The same general trend is seen in fast and slow metabolizers. This type of trend is considered a U-shaped trend, indicating that no coffee and extreme coffee consumption associated with increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Yet some coffee, around one to two cups a day, possibly slightly more, does not increase cardiovascular disease risk. Remember, all of this is correlation, but the trends are consistent across the board. Still, I can't say that the data is as straightforward when we're looking at associative studies looking at caffeine and these caffeine metabolizing genes. Some studies show detrimental associations, unlike the ones here. So I think we can say that caffeine likely has no negative effect on cardiovascular disease risk and may reduce it for most people. However, the jury is still out on people with a slower caffeine metabolism, which will require a deeper dive and greater analysis than what I can provide here. That said, if you want to know if you're in the clear with the faster metabolizing gene, there are a few tests that you can do to find out. So let's find out together.